In this video, I'll demonstrate the Hole tool in Profile Builder. This tool cuts holes through any object that's a group or a component. When the cut object is a profile member, holes can also be easily removed. I have a wall profile with a brick material and bottom left placement. I'll click Build and draw this two-section wall. When I click the Hole Tool icon, the Hole Tool window appears, with three types of hole shapes. For a basic example, I'll start with a rectangle, which is the choice for most windows and doors. I'll make this rectangle 3 feet tall and 2 feet wide, and I'll set the hole placement point at the bottom left corner. The hole is set to cut at full depth. To add this hole to the wall, I'll click the Add icon. Now I can click everywhere I want to cut this hole. The hole will align to any face and cuts all the way through. To remove a hole, I can click the Remove icon, hover over the hole I want, and when I see the hole preview, I can click to remove it. Now let's get into more detail about how this tool works. As I mentioned at the beginning, I can cut holes from any object as long as that object is a group or component. I'll create a similar wall and group it, and I'll use the hole tool to cut the same rectangles. The only difference is that because this group isn't a profile member, I can't remove the holes. When multiple profiles are in a model, it's good practice to select in advance the object or objects that you want to cut. I have a structural steel profile member, and I'll make a few copies of this beam. This time I want to cut a circular hole, save for pipes that need to run through some of these beams. I'll click the circular hole tool, set a 6 inch diameter, and 24 segments. Higher segmentation produces smoother looking circles. Placement will be at the center. Then I'll click Add. If I click this beam, the hole will be created only there. But if I select three beams in advance, then click Add, I can click any of the selected beams to drive the same hole through all three at once. I'll hover over this midpoint, move in the red direction, and click to place the holes in all three of the selected beams. Immediately after placing one hole, I can create additional identical holes. I'll move my cursor in the right direction, type the distance and press enter, then press enter again to complete the holes. These are partial holes. I can also inference from existing points when creating holes. For a set of holes along the flanges of one beam, I'll change the diameter to one inch and click add. I want the hole to line up with this midpoint, so I'll hover over it and tap the control key, not keeping it pressed. I can then move my mouse in the direction I want, and enter the distance for the hole, two inches in this case. The hole preview snaps to that point, and when I press enter again, the hole is cut. And because the hole is full depth, it cuts through both flanges. To place additional holes, I'll move in the red direction, type the distance of four inches, and press enter twice, then repeat as needed. Because the beam profile member is parametric, the holes will be maintained if I make changes. I'll edit this profile to be wider and shorter. Then I'll select and edit this beam, changing just the profile. The holes stay in place relative to the beam center, and they still push through both flanges. Trimming or extending the profile member won't affect the holes. I'll click the Extend or Split tool, select this beam, and highlight this end, and move the end back. Now there is one hole left. If I then extend the beam, the holes are back in their original spots, and the partial hole is now closed. Hole cutting also works with assemblies. I'll open the assembly dialog and click Search to bring in this cavity wall. This particular assembly is comprised of five nested profile members. There are no regular components. I'll click Build and draw out four walls. I'll set a rectangular hole, click Add, and create the holes. The holes go straight through all nested groups and components. And because each layer of this wall is a single profile member, and the hole is full depth, the holes go through the entire set of walls. I'll undo these holes. If I want the holes to cut only one wall at a time, I can set the depth. I'll uncheck full depth and enter 2 feet. This is higher than the depth of the wall, but low enough to not reach the other side. Now I can go around and place holes that will each only affect a single wall. Holes don't have to go all the way through a profile member. If I set the depth at 3 inches, I can create a textured pattern along the exterior brick. 
or I can set a depth of 4 inches, which will cut through only the exterior brick profile member. I can also create a hole with shapes other than a circle or rectangle. I have this profile member with four walls and this oval-shaped pipe profile member. I'll select both and run Intersect Faces with Model to get the intersection curves. I'll click Custom Hole, where I now have two choices for the hole profile. If I click the profile name, I can then sample any profile member in the model to get its profile shape. I'll click the pipe, whose profile name, Oval, is listed in the Hole Tool window. Now I can click Add and place holes using this profile, and at full depth, the holes go all the way through. But note that this profile has a vertical offset and center placement. Now say I want to place the holes exactly where the pipe runs through, which means I'll have to make some changes to the oval profile. I'll click the profile icon to load the oval properties into another instance of the profile dialog. Here I can remove the vertical offset, change the placement point, then click OK. Now when I click Add, then hide the pipe itself, I can easily place the hole in the right spot. I can also use a profile shape that's not already a profile in the model. I'll draw an arch shape right on the wall and select this face. In the Hole Tool window, I'll click Custom Hole, then click the Profile icon. This opens the second profile dialog where I can click the plus sign to add this shape as a new profile. I'll name this profile Arch and click OK. I'll set the placement point to bottom left and click OK to close. Then I'll erase the arch face. In the Hole Tool window, I'll set a depth and click Add. Let's say I want the corner of this window to be 3 feet from the edge of the wall and 4 feet from the bottom. I'll hover over the lower corner of this wall and tap the Control key. Then move the cursor to the right and enter 36 inches. Then I'll move the cursor straight up and enter 48 inches. When I press Enter again, the hole is created in the correct spot. I can now create additional windows by moving to the right, typing the distance I want, and pressing Enter twice. I can repeat as often as I need to complete the row of holes. Removing holes from assemblies can be a bit more complicated than removing them from profile members. If I try to remove one of these arch holes, I get a message that holes can only be removed from profile members. So I need to drill down into the assembly to access each of the profile members that it comprises. I'll open the wall group, and now I'm able to access each profile member. Now the Remove tool will work, though I have to use it for each of the three profile members that the hole cuts through. Note that assemblies are not always comprised of only profile members. For example, this exterior wall assembly contains profile members, regular components, and one span profile. I'll cut with the same arch shape, using a bottom middle placement point to cut a pass through in this wall. The cut goes all the way through. But if I open this assembly group to remove the hole, it gets a little complicated since there are so many parts to fix. So the rule of thumb is, when dealing with assemblies, be sure of the size, shape, and location of any holes before you actually cut them. In the next video, I'll cover path mode.